The story of Jesus and the coin, which we just heard, is a favorite of many. And if you have a coin in your pocket, I invite you to take it out. If you don't, imagine it. The coins haven't changed a whole lot. Now some have tried to interpret this story as an ordained divide between the secular realm and the religious or spiritual realm. But for people of faith, or Christians in particular, we are called to present the face of Christ always. At work, at school, at church, in all that we do. We can't just leave here and be someone different. And this story really doesn't have anything to do with the separation of church and state, which I think is a good thing. But this story is instead about how we model our lives and upon God's covenant, remembering God's covenant with us through Christ and Christ's ministry when we deal with neighbor and God here within these walls and out there beyond the green line out in front. Now others may see this story as a divide between money and faith. That money isn't part of faith and has no business in it. But God does care about our money because we care about our money. Money is what really drives many of us. It is what we care about because we fear to be without it. And we look at those who don't have it as failures. Or at least that is how it is approached in the secular world when it is divided from the spiritual world. We care so much about money, so much, that we place God's name upon it with an inscription that says we trust in this God. Now, which God are we really talking about? God cares about money because of what we do with it. Our actions or inactions. When we have it and when we don't. It's a demonstration of our faith and our love of neighbor and our love of God. Living out of abundance or living into scarcity. Picture. Jesus is sitting there in the temple, probably in some small room, or perhaps a portico in this magnificent building, teaching, praying, and watching what is going on. There's lots of people milling about, looking at him, Pointing at him saying, there's the rabbi who threw out the money changers yesterday. Or saying, I've heard he can heal the sick and make the blind to see. And the people there are probably gathered around to hear what Jesus has to say. They see a new group of questioners approach him. With honey dripping from their lips. Now the Pharisees have previously sent the elders and chief priests to question Jesus. Question him about what authority he has to do and say what he does and says. So that they can hopefully trip him up. Accuse him of blasphemy or rabble-rousing against the empire. But it didn't end well for that first group of questions. This time... Pharisees have sent the Herodians, or maybe the Herodians, if you prefer. The Herodians are supporters of the dynasty of Herod the Great, the deceased father of the present king, Herod Antipas of Galilee. Herod Antipas was placed on the throne by Caesar Augustus around 4 BCE and is presently being supported by Caesar Tiberius. 
whose is the emperor's head on the coin presented to Jesus by the Herodians. The Herodians were supporters of the status quo from which the Pharisees and other well-to-do people, including religious and non-religious, Jew and Gentile, were benefiting. I mean, who wants to change the status quo when they're living good, when you're living good, when you're on top? Why would you want to change the status quo? Christ's mission was not to reverse the pecking order, but to do away with the pecking order. But I digress. Back to the coin. The coin produced by the Herodians in order to get Jesus into trouble. In order, in order to get him to say something that would get him into trouble. The coin that was produced in the temple by the Herodians was itself unlawful to possess in the temple in the first place. Images of living things were not allowed on temple property. The head of Caesar on the denarius depicted a living thing. That was why there were many changes, one of the reasons why there were many changes in and around the temple. Temple coinage that you would get in exchange for your Roman coinage, you went to the money chambers. And temple coinage had designs, but these designs were not depicting any living thing upon them. And any bystanders that day who heard this conversation could recognize that the coin produced by the Herodians out of their pockets or purses was unlawful. And if they didn't notice it at first, Jesus made sure that they did by asking whose image is upon this coin, whose head is upon this coin. And the Herodians responded, the emperor's. Whose image, whose head, image? Where have we heard that before? Image. From Genesis, let us create man in our own image. I'll use the word humans. God created humans in God's own image. Whose image is upon the coin? A man's image, a human's image. One created by God with the image of God stamped upon him. When Jesus said, give to God what is God's, and give to the emperors what is the emperor's. The Herodians were astonished. Not so much because they understood where Jesus was going with that statement, but because he had shown them for what they were, hypocrites. And because he didn't even come close to being caught in their trap. But of course, that wouldn't stop them from trying again. Next time, it's the Sadducees who ask the question. Something had to be done about that man. But Jesus' statement to give God what is God's and give to the emperor a man, even though the emperor thought he was a god, to give what is the emperor, it echoes to us through time. The circles around us here in this worship space and around this altar. All is God's. All of us are God's. Whether we want or care to admit it, or whether we may want to run away from it. We all belong to this entity that is bigger than any human that has ever lived, that does live, Bigger than any that will ever exist. Any human. We belong to this entity that created us out of love and stamped her image of honest at the birth of creation. Today, we celebrate and remember that stamp of God's image and likeness 
upon us through the baptism of Jack Thomas Roberts. We remember that image of God and acknowledge that we belong to the same God who took human form and became poor for our sake and who walked among us some 2,000 years ago. We know that same God continues now to walk with us in our presence through the Holy Spirit. That same God is calling us to remember that we, created in God's image, stamped with God's image, was the same God that created all the Caesars and all the strata of society, ancient and modern, and that all belong to God, and God will not let us be anything else but God despite how many lawful and unlawful coins might be presented telling us otherwise. That is the good news of Jesus Christ. And it is very good news. Amen. Amen.